A good friend and I were driving across Indiana on a recent fall day when she looked out the window and asked, what are you seeing? On another earlier trip, she'd asked that question while we were deep in conversation about landscape and light. I'd waxed eloquently about the qualities of light that lit the fields filled with corn stubble and soft contours of Midwestern rolling ground, eloquently enough, at least, that she seemed to enjoy the conversation. In my view on things she didn't seem to see with her hillier, woodier New England eyes. But this time her question stopped me cold. I looked around. I saw a not too unusual cloudy Indiana day in the middle of harvest. Some fields were picked, some weren't. I wondered why I couldn't see the same way I did on our earlier trip. Then it hit me. I wasn't paying attention and love to the landscape. Instead, I was paying attention to my friend and our conversation about books and writers. Paying attention and love was something I'd been thinking about. It's an idea I first encountered in the writings of a fellow named Belden Lane, a humanities professor in the theology department at St. Louis University. Lane talks about paying attention and love because he believes that doing so allows anything, even ordinary things, to become a way of glimpsing the profound. He quotes the psalmist as asking, whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? And responds in essence, there is nowhere. God is everywhere. Once we focus our attention and love on the holy ordinary, Lane maintains, it's hard for us to ever see again the people and things around us as anything but gifts from God. Our lives then no longer move between the two camps of the secular and the sacred. All is sacred. The idea of discerning the divine at work in the everyday speaks to my heart. My friend Carrie Newcomer crafts wonderfully sensitive spiritual songs. One of my favorites is Holy as a Day is Spent that talks about the holiness of dish and drain, soap and sink, busy streets, check out girls counting change, hymns of geese flying overhead, familiar rooms and quiet moments in the afternoon. Her song ends, Holy is the place I stand to give whatever small good I can. And the empty page and the open book Redemption everywhere I look. Unknowingly, we slow our pace in the shade of unexpected grace and with grateful smiles and sad lament, as holy as a day is spent, and morning light sings providence as holy as a day is spent. Newcomer song reminds us that God is the God of the daily and the daily reveals the deity. Learning to perceive this leads us into a new way of seeing, a way of seeing the invisible hand of God in all with which we have been blessed. It's like when I see the shaker box in our kitchen. In silence, I notice its simple beauty and remember the day I watched Charles Harvey making it. I remember his care. I see him hunched over his workbench, shaping the wood, setting the copper nails, and then signing his name and date to the bottom. Instead of just seeing a simply elegant oval box, like our friends and family do when we're all gathered in the kitchen, I also see that trip that took my wife Nancy and me to a shop in Berea, Kentucky. I bask in the love of that trip and meeting this artisan. I rejoice in Charles' handiwork and the blessing his work is in our lives, even a decade later. Paying attention in love helps us stop and sense God, the creator, present in everyday life. When we do that, we begin to see that the poetry of the Psalms may be more than poetry. Then the trees of the forest will sing. They will sing before, for joy before the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Singing trees, jubilant fields, seem like poetic language. Trees don't sing and fields don't rejoice, or do they? 
Could it be that the golden light that transforms field trash into something of beauty is the way the fields are being jubilant, reflecting God's light back to heaven? Could the graceful, waving, naked limbs of trees be hands uplifted in praise to God? Maybe that's all a bit mystical, yet we each could use a bit more of the divine mystery in our lives. This appreciation for the divinely mysterious presence of God all around us helps us slow down and appreciate God's goodness to us. It enables us to see the divine mark upon all of life's goodness, from maple shaker boxes to fox squirrels in the maple trees. Perhaps that's why an English Quaker named William Littleboy once wrote, God is above all the God of the normal. In the common facts and circumstances of life, he draws near to us quietly. He teaches us in the routine of life's trifles, gently and unnoticed. His guidance comes to us through the channels of reason and judgment. We have been taught by him when we least suspected it, we have been guided, though the guiding hand rested upon us so lightly that we were unaware of its touch. God's guiding hand resting lightly upon us is best felt when we learn to pay attention and love to the holy ordinary surrounding us. 